What's up guys, I'm going to change gears a little bit today, and we are not going to be in Microsoft Flight Simulator at all. We are actually going to be in PowerPoint. Uh, so the, the reason that I'm coming into PowerPoint is I want to talk about what is going on behind the scenes in your control surfaces and in the flight dynamics of the aircraft. Now this is not important to know to be able to fly the high performance group H145 or any helicopter in that for that matter. It is common to all helicopters and uh, it does help to understand what's going on. Uh, if you are a pilot then you are manipulating these forces and it does help to understand what is going on behind the scenes. So very crudely drawn what I have here is the rotor mast. This is called the swash plate. These are rotating control rods. And these are your rotor blades. You got one coming right out at your face. You got one going back. You got one forward. And then this right here is a very, very, very accurate and detailed representation of your collective lever in the cockpit. All right. So um, one thing I did not put in here. Uh, is this mast would continue up and attach to the rotor head and of course would spin the whole system. Um, and then another thing is your swash plate uh, consists of a rotating section and a non-rotating section. The non-rotating section is connected to your input levers by a system of linkages and controls and levers and bell cranks and flex balls and you know whatever the system uses to move it and then the rotating portion is connected to these rotating control rods so that any change to the swash plate of the non-rotating section is transferred to the rotating control rods by the swash plate all right so the first thing we're going to talk about is the collective so when you raise the collective it is going to pull those rotating control rods down and it is going to incle increase the pitch of the blades collectively. That means all together, all the same, the same amount is going to move it up and down so that when you pull collective, all of those blades increase their pitch and take a larger bite of air, thereby generating more lift all collectively, all the same amount, all at the same time. And remember, these are spinning. So as these rotating control rods ride round and round and around on the swash plate, they are pulling down on these blades all collectively, all the same amount. And I know that sounds, well, duh, but that's not always the case because what we're going to talk about next is cyclic pitch. So here is a very accurate and detailed representation of your cyclic lever in the cockpit. Right now it is it is centered, which means this swash plate is sitting just like you see it. Now, if I were to deflect that cyclic in a direction, it would tilt my swash plate. So collective moves the swash plate up and down collectively. All blades, all the same amount, all the same value throughout their rotation. Cyclic tilts the swash plate. So as this rotating control rod is turning around and around and around, as it comes past this point, it starts being pulled down by the swash plate. And as it's pulled down by the swash plate, it pulls down on the pitch horn of the main rotor blade and increases the pitch of that blade as it comes around here to the maximum point of pitch and then starts being pushed back up as it comes around the front side and cyclically changes the pitch. So every time a blade comes around here, it is pulled down, takes a larger bite of air, generates more lift, and every time it comes around up here, it take, it's pushed up and it generates less lift, takes a smaller bite of air. So as these blades are rotating, they grab a bigger bite of air here and a smaller bite of air here, generating more lift on this side of the disc and less lift on this side of the disc. All right. Now, as we come back to center, they go back to having the same amount of pitch all the way around. As we go to the right, it does the opposite. The swash plate tilts. This, the rotating control rods are pulled down on the right side of the swash plate, take a larger bite of air here, generating more lift. As they come around, they're pushed up and take a smaller bite of air here. All right. As I push forward, these blades over here are neutral pitch. 
and a larger bite of air is taking you. Imagine this swash plate tilting towards me, which means as this rod comes around here, it's pulled down, takes a larger bite of air here, comes around to neutral, and then it comes around to the back side and takes a less bite of an air on the back. And then same thing when we do the blade in the opposite, the rotate, the swash plate tilts away from us as the rotating control rod comes around to the front. It takes less of a bite of air. The blade is pushed up. The back of the blade is pushed up. As it comes around, it begins to be pulled down. As it goes around the back side of the swash plate, it's pulled down, which pulls the trailing edge of the blade down and takes a larger bite of air, and that cycle continues. All right, so the way to see this is as the blade spins around from the front, if the swash plate is tilted such that the largest or the the highest point of um, angle of attack is right here. So as the blade comes around, it's pulled down. The trailing edge is pulled down by the rotating control rod as it rides along that swash plate. It slowly generates more and more and more lift as it rotates around. As it passes this point, it's at the maximum angle of attack. It's generating the most lift. All right? And then it continues around until it gets to the neutral point of lift, here and here. Because the swash plate is tilted such that this point and this point are level with each other. Now the swash plate is tilted such that this is the least point. So that as that blade comes around, it generates less and less and less lift until right here, it's the least point of lift. And then the rotating control rod starts pulling the or the swash plate starts pulling the rotating control rod down to generate more and more lift until finally it reaches the maximum point of lift. Now as these blades are rotating round and around and around, every time a blade passes this point, it, it starts generating more lift until the maximum here and less. And then the next blade in the rotation comes through here and generates more lift. And then the next blade, more lift. Then the next blade, more lift. So this is happening constantly. As, a, as the blades rotate, they generate more lift here and less lift here. All right? Now, because of something called gyroscopic precession, these blades are spinning, which means that does not actually take effect. It does not move the disc until 90 degrees out of phase. I don't know why that did not. That was supposed to animate, but there it goes. So 90 degrees out of phase in direction of rotation is where that takes effect. So this right here is actually forward cyclic. So this is the front of the aircraft, this is the back of the aircraft. So when we push forward cyclic, the blades on the left side of the helicopter are generating more lift than the blades on the right side of the helicopter, which takes effect 90 degrees out of phase, which lifts the disc on the back side of the helicopter and causes the disc to tilt downward on the front side of the helicopter. All right? Now, if we were to move our stick in this direction to the left, this would actually be biting more air on the back side of the rotor disc and less air on the front side of the rotor disc. So every time the blade comes over the tail, it's being pulled down by the swash plate, grabs a larger bite of air, and then less and being pushed up as it comes around the right side and continues to be pushed up as it comes around to the nose of the aircraft where it generates the least amount of lift. Then it starts being pulled down more, 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 most. And every blade does this as it goes around. Now this takes effect 90 degrees out of phase, causes the disc to be pulled up on the right side and pushed down on the left side, or pushed up and pulled down, however you want to think of it. But this causes the disc to tilt to the left. All right? Now... Imagine you're looking at the rotor disc. This is your rotor disc right here. All lift is always generated normal to or at a 90 degree angle to the rotor disc. All right? So lift is always generated straight up through the rotor disc. When we when we push left cyclic and we tilt the disc to the left, the lift vector tilts along with the disc and what that causes is part of our lift vector is used for lift and part of our tilt vector is used for thrust all right so this if you imagine this could be the front of the helicopter here 
whoops. This is the front of the helicopter here. And this is the tail of the helicopter. So when I push the cyclic forward and the aircraft tilts forward, then part of my thrust is being used for lift and part of my thrust is being used for forward thrust. So it starts accelerating the aircraft forward. Same thing if I tilt the disc back, part of that thrust, part of the lift generated by the rotor system is used to lift the helicopter and part of it would be used to decelerate the helicopter to slow it down. All right, so because we're dividing this lift vector between lift and thrust, that means that the lift portion becomes smaller. All right, so we previously, when this lift, when this uh, vector was enough to hold the helicopter up, when we tilt the rotor disc, it's no longer enough because this is now less than our weight, which causes the aircraft to settle, which means we have to pull more collective, so increase the um, lift of the entire disc so that now this vector is the same as the weight vector, which increases the overall lift and increases the forward thrust of the rotor system. All right, so another thing we got going on is in the uh, BK-117D2, the H-145, and all, all American helicopters, the rot rotor system rotates counterclockwise when viewed from above. So that's showing this right here, all right? So if you imagine on your car, when you, uh, if you were to raise your hood, start your engine, raise your hood on your car, and you, you gag the throttle, you, you, you know, you, you put your foot in it, and you rev the engine very quickly, you'll notice the engine torques, it rolls inside of the engine bay, all right? Because that engine is spinning one way, it attempts to spin the engine case the other way. Uh, uh, Newton's one of Newton's laws says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. If you stand on ice and you shove somebody, they're going to go backwards, but you're also going to go backwards. So when these blades are rotating counterclockwise from above, the transmission is rotating them counterclockwise, but the transmission is also trying to rotate the aircraft aircraft clockwise. And the more collective you pull, the more pronounced this becomes. All right. So this is why we have to have the tail rotor. So we we use the tail rotor, we blow air through the tail rotor, and we shoot it out this side in order to counter that. All right? And so because of Newton's law, every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, when we blow air through the left side from right to left through the tail rotor, it pushes on that tail rotor to the right to counter this right here. So that this equals this and the aircraft remains stabilized. Now, it remains stabilized in the rotational axis, but because we are blowing air this way and there's a resultant force on the airframe going this way, that force is translated through the airframe and becomes into a right translating tendency. So when you push left pedal, blowing the air to the left to bring the nose to the left, the entire aircraft is pushed to the right, and you'll notice it start to slide to the right. So we counter that with a little bit of left cyclic. We tilt our rotor disc to the left ever so slightly to make up for that force, that resultant force. All right, so... Quick down and dirty, maybe more to follow if anybody is actually interested in this. Um, up to you guys. Let me know in the comments if you want me to dig deeper into flight controls and aerodynamics and kinematics and all that stuff of the uh, the rotor system, the aircraft in flight. Uh, if not, then this will be the last one that I do. So we'll see on uh, thumbs up, comments, subscribes, you know, whatever, whether or not you guys want to see more.